So week 14 for Journal 52 is the word horizon. So we have this fabulous little ATC image which lo almost looks like an evening sky with kind of like cliffs and trees stood on the top and you have like a, a sea with breakwater just across the middle giving you, or at the bottom there, giving you your horizon line. Um, <clears throat> the actual prompts read the apparent junction of earth and sky range of perception or experience something that might be attained for example new horizons synonyms boundary perspective scope border limit and vista the prompt divide your page so that it has a horizon line what will you put beneath the horizon and what will you put above it what is within your sphere of influence and how far ahead can you see what is on your horizon okay so for me I like the idea of dividing the page so that it has a horizon line, but um, I think I'm going to create um, something in my circle journal, but rather than draw a line right the way across the middle, I think I'm going to use up some of these pieces of corrugated card that I have and create a kind of um, symmetry line going through the middle. So we have kind of um, the same above as we have below the horizon line on the page. But who knows how this is going to turn out. So I'm going to begin by sticking down the pieces of corrugated cardboard with the multi-purpose spirit glue from Collol. Now my pieces of corrugated cardboard have been rolled up so they're going to curl. So you're going to see me sticking them down with the glue and then weighting them down with just bits and pieces that I have around my craft desk which are little pots of paint and just something bits and pieces that have a little bit of weight to them just to try and hold them down to stop them from curling on the page. So now that all my pieces of corrugated cardboard are stuck down, I'm going to put them to one side and let them dry for a good hour before carrying on. Now everything's dry, I'm bringing out my white gesso from Indigo Blue, and then I'm going to give the entire page, including the corrugated cardboard, a thin coating of that white gesso. And now that I'm happy that there's enough gesso on there, I'm just going to grab my heat gun and give it a gentle warming to make sure it's all nice and dry before we move on to the next step. Next up, I'm going to take the Townhouse Teal acrylic paint from Indigo Blue. I'm going to add some to my craft mat, then mix it with water to create a nice high flow, loose mixture. And then I'm going to add some splatters, heavy splatters, all across the bottom section, concentrating on the bottom section, of my art journal page. So when I'm happy I've got enough splatters on the page, I'm going to bring up the heat gun and I'm going to warm it, but not completely. I'm not going to dry it completely. I want it to be partially dry. I'm going to grab a brush and then as you can see, I'm just reactivating, moving the remaining paint across the page. Now where it's dried, it's created little circles where the splodges and splats have been. So I've created a kind of speckled texture using like a half dried method. And once I'm happy with it, I can then dry it completely using the heat gun. Next up, I'm using the hot cocoa acrylic paint again from Indigo Blue. 
and then using a dry brush method just put a little bit on my craft mat and then I'm just going to dry brush it across the tops of the ridges on the corrugated cardboard but only towards the top half of the page maybe bring it a little bit into the bottom part but not a lot So while I'm adding the hot cocoa, I decided I want some darker splatters and darker areas in that blue bottom half of the page. So for that, I'm bringing out my Teal Luscious Pigment Powders from Indigo Blue. I've already pre-mixed up a little bit of it with some water into a spritz bottle, and I'm just going to spritz some splatters of that pigment powder, and it's a mica pigment powder, so it will have a nice glistening shine to it. So next I'm bringing back the white gesso from Indigo Blue and again I'm going to mix some of the white gesso with some water on my craft mat and I'm going to add some white splatters to the page but only on the bottom half of the page. So I'm going to have a quick tidy up, a quick clean up on my craft mat, get rid of the excess paint to make sure I don't stick my elbow in it, which I'm prone to do, and then bring out the heat gun and make sure it's all nice and dry. Next I'm bringing out my Jet Black Archival Ink. I have a blending foam and I also have the Half Tone Borders stencil from TCW. Now I believe this is a Dina Wakely design. And I thought that I would use the black ink to create some detail in the top half of the corrugated cardboard but after I'd done it I realized that it wasn't really visible the holes were too small and all you get was a very minor effect yeah well you win some you lose some so next I'm bringing out my pigment number no. 8 micron pen from Sakura and I'm going to add in my visible horizon line just by adding a scribbly doodly kind of border right the way down the middle and just to make sure I have got that depth of colour I'm going to do it twice so I've gone over once I'm going to go back over it again so now my horizon line is in place I'm just going to add a few little doodles and a few little detail dots around the edges of my corrugated cardboard but again only on the top part of the page. And now because I've introduced the colour black in the pen in the horizon line and the doodles, I also now need to include a black doodled border just to make sure that the coherence and the balance is there. So I'm just going to add a very minor doodly scribbly border all the way around the page. And now the doodle board is complete, it's time to add a quote. So using my Dymo Letra Tag label maker, I've already printed or typed out the message that I want, and now I'm just printing the label. And because it's self-adhesive, I just peel off the back and then I can stick that down. Now I decide to add this to a piece of black card to give it a black border all the way around. And um, it looks much tidier. So I've added a foam dot, pop dot, and a little bit of glue on the back of the card, just because it's an uneven surface and it makes it um, nice and level when I stick it down and I'm just going to manoeuvre it into position and then all that remains to be done is for me to sign and date it and then I'm going to call this page complete. And that's it, job done for week 14 on Journal 52. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this fairly simplistic art journal page come together. You don't really need a lot of layers to get some good effects. Using texture like the corrugated cardboard is a great way to create an art journal page and use up some of your scraps too. So if you did enjoy it, please remember to give it a thumbs up, share the video with all your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. And I'd also like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you, this video would not have been possible. Thank you. That's all from me for now. I'll see you all again real soon. Bye for now.